open our February meeting with a salute to the flag, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, before we get started this evening, we have to take a quick executive session to discuss uh, appointments to uh, personnel issues for our planning and zoning boards. Uh, should only take a few minutes, but I'd like to make a motion to one executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? And Carried. Aye. Some yeah, you know, we, uh, <laughs> we had a good conversation. I thought I heard your cars were down the road. <laughs> I did, I came back. <laughs> Love you. That, that was for Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need a motion to come out of the executive session. So moved. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, let's get started uh, with our approval of our town board minutes, our regular, <clears throat> excuse me, our regular board minutes. Um, organizational meeting and board minutes. We have separate. We have separate. Yes. Yes. Let's do our regular town board minutes meeting. Minutes. That's a motion. To approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We have our organizational meeting minutes from January. Any other questions, comments, corrections? Motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We also have our meeting minutes from the January 17th uh, policy review meeting. And uh, we'll review the books. Anybody got any comments, questions? Motion approved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mary. It's a lot of minutes. Keeping you busy. It's a lot of minutes. Uh, let's start off with the Clerk report, please. Town Clerk's report for January 2015. Community House lease, first quarter, $1,000. Zoning Board of Appeals, special permit use application, $100. Planning Board, boundary line change, $75. Site plan applications, two of them for $200. Dog licensing, $34. Town clerk fees, miscellaneous spoil copies, $6.25. Decals, fishing licenses, $2.76. The check for the general fund, $1,418.01. Trust and agency, escrow, $325.60. Check for trust and agency, $325.60. <coughs> Paid to New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets for dog surcharges, $10.00. Paid to New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for fishing licenses, $47.24. Total for the month of January, $1,800.85. Move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Dawn. Evan, Evan, Evan and Dawn. Carrie. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Evan and Chris. Evan, Evan and Chris. Oh my gosh. It's telling you reading them, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> All right, mail review. Any come in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from Robert Parolo. I wish to inform the town planning board that due to my other responsibilities, I could not commit to another year of service. Please consider this my official resignation from this position. If I need to write a letter, I will do so. Just let me know. This was an email. If this will suffice, please let me know that as well. I would like to say it has been a pleasure and privilege to be a member of the Town of Claremont Planning Board. I wish all the members of the board good luck in the future and continued good work. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, um, I'd just like to thank Robert for his service to the town. He served on the planning board a couple times now, he left for a short period and came back, and I certainly appreciate his, uh, his uh, service to the town, and uh, his absence will be missed. Thank you. Okay, what else you have? The only other thing I have is uh, the yearly report 
for 2014 from John Fieser, our building inspector. Okay. He had a freedom of information request for order to remedy violation six, appearance, tis mm -hmm. appearance ticket one, subpoena to testify at court one, building permits issued 34, certificate of occupancies 23, municipal search letters 30. Building permit summary, new homes, one, solar panel, six, barns, garages, decks, sheds, 27. Very good. Thank you. All right. Anything else? That's it. Okay, that's yep. it. Correspondence for the web committee. <coughs> Evan, do you have anything? We did. We did. Anybody have any uh, comments? Suggestions for the web committee? The only thing I can think of is that we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago of the Village Green Committee, and it has been confirmed that the barbecue and tractor pull will be on August 15th, so maybe we can put that out there as a save the date. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. move on to uh, committee reports. Bob? Uh, nothing worth trying. I just want to mention that, again, the highway guys have been working really hard. Uh, they did have a little problem with uh, one of their trucks and got the spare all set up, so it's, and, and, but didn't have to use it because they got it back from that point pretty much the same day. So but it, it was good that they have the spare so they can use it if they have to. It's important. Very yeah. important. Yeah. And they've been, uh, they've been busy the last few days. A little bit to deal with, that's for sure. Yeah. Last month we had a lot of, as everybody knows, a lot of uh, snow, ice, and cold weather, which is uh, keeping road structures. So, tough to keep up with them. All right. They've been doing a good job, though, at least for the world I ride on. Yeah. In fact, I had a uh, member of the community tell me that he was thinking of even writing a letter. He said they really did a good job. Very good. All right. Ivan, you have anything to update on? No. What's going on with the budget saying yet? All right. Chris? No. Dawn? Um, as I mentioned last month, there was a grant opportunity from the Bank of Green County. And I did speak with Tammy from the Village Green Committee. And one of the needs that they had was for a locking cabinet. In the event of an emergency, the community house can be called into service as a comfort station. So they wanted a locking cabinet that they can put those supplies for that event in there and they'll know that they're safe and they will be there in the event that they're needed. So I applied for a grant for $350 for that. We should know in about 90 days whether or not we, we receive that. <clears throat> um, after the last meeting, Mary Howard sent me some information from NYSERDA and the New York Power Authority. Um, I'm gonna uh, re uh, research those two opportunities. They're mostly for energy efficiency but I know Bob was speaking with her with regard to the, the highway new building about that. And maybe we can have some savings with putting energy in those buildings. Um, as I mentioned that the barbecue is going to be August 15th. The next meeting in the Village Green Committee is a week from today. Um, in this building at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, February 10th. I'm sure we would be happy to have anybody who's interested join us. So um, I'm going to try and continue to meet with that group and keep this um, the board updated. That's pretty much it. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, move on to old business. A couple things. We, uh, when we did our policy review, we went through all the policies. Uh, it was a good review. We had a couple things we wanted to update. Um, first is resolution that we uh, passed in organizational minutes for the list of fees for the planning board, no, excuse me, for the building inspector, and, and planning is on here, I'm sorry. Uh, so what we did is we, if you remember correctly, we added the language that uh, we could collect an escrow for the zoning board, which we haven't been doing. Uh, what page is that on there? Second, second page, the second very page at the very bottom where it says escrow for engineering attorney fees. That's where we added that additional line for zoning board. Uh, standard escrow the time application would be 150 dollars so that's now listed in our list of fees uh, we just have to adopt this resolution which is our amended resolution to replace uh, resolution 35 
So this is resolution number 46 13, the amended version. No, 35. 30? It is 35, 30, 15. Amended now. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the old. Resolution of 46. 46. Oh, that was the original. I'm sorry. No, no. Resolution number 35-15 is our amended version of our piece. Shoot. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Gary. Uh, one of the other things we looked at was, uh, we looked at everything, and one of the other things we had questions on, and we uh, decided to, after speaking to our animal control officer this evening, um, was to take a look at the uh, veterinarian contracts we have with Pine Plains and Round Top uh, Animal Hospital. We have it spelled out in, in the contract that it's an $18 per day charge uh, the town would pay for impounded dogs, but we, didn't have, we did not have a cap or you know, a maximum amount payable. So what I'd like to do is uh, include that in the language where it says we'll be paid the sum of $18 per day with a 10-day maximum. Um, just after that, type it up and send it back out to both of these uh, you know, veterinarian you know, hospitals and have them agree to it and sign it. And then at least we'll have some kind of cap on it. Uh, 10 days, uh, again, we thought was reasonably That's fair. Um, plenty of time for them to decide what they're doing with this animal because as of right now we haven't had an issue last year we had a couple or maybe two years ago we had a couple issues where it was uh, quite expensive uh, we'd like to at least see some some kind of cap on the amount of days that we're, we're authorizing this spending to be so uh, I will get those fixed and sent out and put them back in front of us for a vote once we get them corrected you want a motion to, to do that or? um okay. yeah we we'll move that move that we uh, take action to amend Three contracts. Okay. Through a 10-day maximum. Motion second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, next, agenda, uh, next thing I did was the quotes for the furnace. Um, we actually reviewed these. We had two quotes. We actually asked for quotes at our last, uh, when we reviewed the policies. We had open meeting. Obviously, we uh, opened bids on the furnace replacement for the town hall. We had some issues last month with the furnace kicking out. Um, it's been fixed, but we've known all along there's been issues with this furnace. It's not efficient. It needs uh, it needs work and needs parts. And we decided to put out for bid uh, what a replacement unit would be, rather than put money into a, a system that's really, you know, we don't know how much money we'd have to put into it to fix it, um, but it would probably almost as much to replace that. So at this point, we decided uh, it would be probably beneficial to replace the furnace. So I got two quotes, one from uh, Valley Energy, which is who supplies the heating fuel oil right now, and one from k &H Fuel Oil, which is uh, the person we have servicing the equipment every year. So the first quote came in from Valley Energy. Uh, first, let me go back, we, we compared these. Um, it, it's very, very close. It's, it's not identical apples to apples, but it's very, very close um, to what they quoted. And we went through the differences and we agreed that you know they're, they're basically quoting the exact same product the exact same make and model um so you know we're comfortable that it's it's a, it's a comparable uh, proposal uh, valley energy the price was four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars which is a reasonable price for what the work is to be done um and then the, the price from k and h fuel oil is three thousand three hundred um he gave us a very good price uh, probably part of his you know being a local guy local to part of the town I think he gave us a, a break on uh, the cost, but uh, I'm very you know, happy with both estimates, but obviously uh, k and fuel is, is quite a bit considerably less. And uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, put up the vote. There, there was one difference, right, that he, he, he would have added $100. Is that included when you said $3,000? That's included, yes. It's priced okay. for $3,200, yes. Okay. The one difference that there was there, um, we added an additional $100 on, which after speaking to him was what he said it would charge to do that. So. Uh, to make them, you know, almost identical bids. Okay. So it's 33 to 4,350. So it's $1,050 cheaper. Okay. So uh, right. I'll move. I'd like to accept the uh, K&H fuel for furnace replacement. Second. Okay. Motion second. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. That will be out of. Where we budgeted it, we did budget money for this. Uh, the buildings, uh, 
People haven't seen the paper or read the uh, online. Um, Claremont received uh, funding or is receiving New York State funding for the proposed cleanup of the former Hentling property. Uh, the awarded bid, I think, was six hundred and I should have that front me, six hundred and thirteen thousand dollars roughly uh, to clean up the former property of Hentlings over here. Um, this was all part of the application that we put in and we're working on for seven, eight years um, to try to get it funded, probably more than that, you're right. Um, they finally came through with uh, some funding available. It is not a grant fund, it's not money that they will be issuing to the town. It is um, going to be handled by the state. So um, it is different than the other rounds of funding that's been awarded. So uh, we have a lot of questions on how that's going to take place, um, the process, what involvement the town will have. So I contacted um, people in charge of this program and instead of a meeting uh, as a matter of fact it's tomorrow uh, will be held here at the town hall uh, it's been published in the paper uh, as an uh, open meeting because uh, we were we will have a quorum at this meeting so it is open to the public uh, but uh, we have them coming down from the state to, dis to explain the process uh, I have our town attorney coming down and I also have uh, Kurt Moline from CT mail which is the guy who basically headed the whole application process and, and, and worked this through this over the past several years to get this actually in and uh, get it considered for funding. So um, we're all meeting here tomorrow to go through this to find out what the process is going to be. Um, again, like I said, we have a lot of concerns. We want to make sure because we are on the hook for 10% of the project as a town cost. And, and laid out in the original plan, we were going to offset our 10% uh, with materials that we have on the back part of the parcel that's clean that we can use for fill. Uh, we're hoping that's still okay. We want to verify that because that would offset the $60,000 roughly that we would have to come up with as a town. Um, so it really wouldn't cost us anything to do this. That's our goal. That's what we've been working at. Um, we certainly are going to try to confirm that. Uh, but uh, I think that's, uh, you know, some of the stuff will iron out in tomorrow's initial meeting. And then um, if another one's needed, we'll set that. But uh, we'll certainly have more to update everybody on after tomorrow's meeting for next month. Um, but uh, it's good news. I mean, I can't say uh, I really didn't think we were ever going to see this funding because of the priority list of where I think we fall compared to some of the other sites that really uh, or could certainly use this. Uh, but I'm glad that you know we certainly can finally get this put to rest and, and hopefully get it cleaned up to where we can use it, which would be great. Um, so uh, really excited about it, and we'll uh, keep everybody updated as soon as we have more information. Did you say the time for it's 11 o'clock? Oh well. 11 o'clock tomorrow, but it's a little bit too late for the tape, but uh, the paper might get in. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, um, we'll be meeting with everybody right here. Okay, uh, planning board. Uh, we have two vacancies uh, that came about. Uh, one of them, we just heard the rights of the nation. We knew this, we mentioned it last month, we knew it was coming. We also have a planning and zoning board vacancy right now. Um, we held interviews also on the 17th when we re reviewed our books and policies. Um, we certainly uh, uh, would like to thank everybody that, that came in. Uh, we had three people interested. So uh, we did review everybody, or uh, excuse me, um, interview everybody. And at this time, I'd like to make the appointment to the planning board. Uh, I want to make the appointment of Nathan Hempel, and that will be through the unexpired term, which will end in 12 31 2019. Uh, so moved. Move. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstention. Carry. And the zoning board would like to make the appointment of Don Van Wagner through the unexpired term, um, 12 31 of 2016. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Now this creates and leaves a, a still an opening as, a, as an alternate for the zoning board. Um, I'd also like to make that appointment. The yearly appointment. Uh, I'd like to appoint Phyllis Heiko as the ultimate zoning board member. 
for this for to fill out the rest of the 2015. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Who was the second on that? I'm sorry. Chris. 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 Wow, I'm impressed. Okay. Um, supervisor's report. I do not have, unfortunately, I do not have the fourth quarter sales tax money from the county yet. I understand that it is in, it's being distributed. I just did not get the number yet, so I'll let everybody know how we ended up last next month. Um, I should have called the treasurer's office before today, maybe and got it, but uh, by the way, I'll let uh, I'll update everybody you know next month once we receive that final payment, which will let us know exactly how we ended up uh, for our year year end. Um, I don't have a lot to go over. We had a meeting. Pine Haven is always the one of the big topics. Uh, Pine Haven, we had a meeting scheduled for last night, as a matter of fact, with the two higher bidders, excuse me, the higher bidder and the lower bidder that we, we liked, the board liked the best out of the three bids for Pine Haven. Um, they were supposed to, the two, the two bidders were supposed to come in last night to a, a special meeting and uh, go through a round of questions from the, the board of supervisors. Uh, they canceled, obviously, because of the weather. They have not set a scheduled date on this. So, uh, I still have a lot of concerns on this, and I certainly will be asking the questions that I want to answer. Um, but, you know, it's full steam ahead. The county um, has, has pretty much made the commitment, I think, uh, that they want to sell Pine Haven, unfortunately. Uh, I don't agree with that. Like I said, I have a lot of reservations, a lot of concerns, but uh, it's full steam ahead at this point. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know what. Uh, what uh, what good it will do, but I'll certainly uh, try to get the questions answered that I want to know and relay the information. But uh, I'll let everybody know uh, next month how it turns out. I'm sure they'll schedule it before the next month. We did receive the payment for the sale of Akawama School, which was the uh, the old school that the county purchased uh, several years back. Uh, five hundred and five hundred some five hundred five thousand dollars somewhere in that neighborhood, a little over five hundred thousand dollar payment was made to the county. It has been cleared. Uh, that money has been put into a tax stabilization account. Uh, that was one of the uh, questions I had with the county budget, which I thought they'd, I'd rather have seen them taking that money from the sale and uh, put it against the tax increase and wiped out the tax increase, but they wanted to put it uh, in a tax stabilization account to use for future tax increases. So um, either way, they still increased the tax, which I didn't like, but I voted for it. So. Um, <coughs> They will, uh, they will be also receiving a payment on the child, which should be here any day. We did, you know, everybody remembers when the child was a big discussion. We had the five people, we sold the child. That, that money will also be going into that tax stabilization account. Um, now they're, too, they're thinking the same thing with the Pine Haven, which I, I really am gonna have a long conversation about this because if we receive $5 million payment for Pine Haven, I don't think it should be Taking put in a tax stabilization account. I think that should be all set taxes. I want to make sure that happens because it should be the tax increase if we receive a $5 million payment. Um, so that would be for the next few years, I would assume. But again, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. How much was it for that job? $75,000. That's county health. County health home aid. Health home, home health Certified aid. Certified health aid. Okay. Certified home health aid. There you go. The problem was. Funds and offsetting taxes, then pretty soon they're gone, and you're spending at that higher rate. So that should go into some kind of reserve fund rather than an offsetting tax. That's what standard practice has always been. That's correct. <coughs> so the courthouse has been up and completed, uh, up and running. Everything seems to be going good over there. You know, a few, a few little minor bugs, but uh, I believe the judges are fairly happy. Uh, it's a beautiful building. I don't know who's been able to. Visit it, but uh, so you let anybody nice. just go in and walk around? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you get a chance, take a look at it because it's a very, very nice, uh, very nice addition. Um, well, you know, it was actually it was just a very nice addition to an old building. I mean, they made it look very, very nice. <laughs> um, it was also an article in the paper about a having a county manager. They just re they just revisited this last meeting we had uh, about taking a look at the net, the um, yeah taking a look at the county manager position again uh, we looked at it a few years back and the the article seemed to indicate that then you'd have to have a county legislature rather than a board of supervisors that's correct it's possible 
Yes. Which I would be opposed to. Well, you know, get the same representation. That's that's the battle you have. If you have a county manager, which you end up going to a legislative body instead of the county board, which is the legislative body, you do lose your individual representation of each town. Um, that is the argument that some of us have. Um, the only good thing about that is you have somebody there that's full time every single day that makes the decisions that runs the county. Right now, we don't have that. Um, you know, it, it's. There's pros and cons both ways. I was against it last time it was brought up because of what you're saying. You, you lost your loss of individual representation. Um, and I think most of the board is still against it. I mean, there's only, I believe, five or six counties in the state that still have board of supervisors. The rest of them went to some kind of manager or legislative, uh, county legislator, elected like legislator. But, you know, there's fears by many supervisors, which I've talked to, that, you know, it's, it's just a political, it just becomes a political position where, you know, when you have individual town representatives, you have much more say by many different individuals. You have many more different individual, um, you know, personalities and outlooks. And, you know, you get one legislator that's influenced by somebody and you lost, you know, four or five towns is going to be represented, three or four towns by one person. So, so how many people would be on that legislator? It would probably be six or eight, maybe. I'm just guessing. I don't know. You know, you certainly have to have more than you know, more than you know, one maybe for three towns, I don't know, probably. Um, so it's something we're going to take another look at. I don't think there's uh, a lot of people in favor of it, but it's been brought up and it certainly doesn't have to look at again. Um, I'd, I'd like to look at both things again, you know, both directions, uh, both ways. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I don't, think, uh, I don't think it's the best for Columbia County. Other than that, I don't really have a lot, uh, a lot else to talk about at this point. We just started our committee meetings back up again, so uh, I'll have more information next month and uh, I'll give everybody an update at that point. And I'd also like to, you know, echo Bob's comments about the highway department. I think they've been doing a great job. They've been, they've been out quite a bit. You know, even these, you know, one or two inch storms are on the road a lot. Put sand and salt material down. Um, all this ice we've had, they've had to keep up with them. They've had a, a full-time job just uh, taking care of the roads this, this past month, and uh, they're doing a good job. And uh, you know, again, yeah, I've heard the same thing. So uh, I'd like to thank them for their, uh, for their efforts. And, and they do still watch the budget yeah. uh, too, because I was in there at lunchtime today, and once I was getting about over, and Jimmy says, "Bob, I'm going to kick you out because I don't want to be paying overtime." Because <laughs> they had to go out and just finish up the roads be before the afternoon was over. And he's funny, isn't he? <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it. Uh, move on to motion to pay abstracts. With a motion to uh, pay general abstract. Vouchers 18 through 50. For the total of six thousand six hundred thirty-four dollars and thirty cents. Second. In favor. Aye. Opposed. Carried. I move that we pay highway abstract number two, vouchers number five through thirteen, in the amount of eight thousand two hundred fourteen dollars and eighty-nine cents. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Carried. I make a motion that we pay trust and agency abstract number one, vouchers number one and two, for a total of $760. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, move on to public comment. Do we have any public comment? Me. <coughs> That's all right. Oh, I was going to I brought my new scanner. All right. So you can see it. This is for scanning for microchips. No, you can push the buttons, it won't hurt anything. So that scans the pets if they, for a microchip, um, you know, once they're, if they're found and gets them back to the owner without having to go to the shelter situation. For this town, it would be going to Pine Plains or or Round Top, <clears throat> both of which have hours that they're you know closed on Sundays and so forth. So it's um, 
it's a big help to me, and certainly to the people that are out looking for their, for their pets. This past Saturday, I had a microchip clinic that I held at Dr. Tucker's office, which is around Top Animal Hospital in Germantown, and we were very successful. We had people come from Ulster County, Greene County, Kinderhook, Chatham, to get their pets microchipped. So it's something that Dr. Tucker has offered to do again. We'll probably next time do it on a Sunday morning. Um, I've also contacted the uh, Columbia County Health Department because starting in March, they have their once a month rabies clinics, which the rabies vaccines are free to residents of Columbia County. That's provided from the state of New York. And the uh, uh, health department has um, graciously agreed to letting me offer microchips there. The microchip itself is free, it's um, administered by a veterinarian, and uh, the registration for the chip, which it's a home again microchip, the registration is $11, it's a lifetime membership, or a lifetime res re registration, and um, it'll just, it'll let, it doesn't wear out, it doesn't fall out, tags I realize are a nice idea, but not very common, you know, just so aren't. What's the uh, the total cost for so if they want to? Uh, if somebody for them. someone to get their pet yeah. microchip, eleven dollars. Eleven dollars. And that's they give that to me in cash. Mm -hmm. I use it immediately to register the pet through home again, and they're set to go. Not that the dogs are supposed to go anywhere. This time it was all dogs, but all animals can be done. Everything, cats, dogs. Horses, fish, snakes. Yeah, isn't there a charge Everything. by the vet also? No, the Dr. Tucker did it complimentary. Um, I, of course, would like other vets to, you know, come on board and offer. We did 19 pets in 30 minutes. It was all it took. I took care of all the paperwork. So all the vet has to do is just pop the chip in, and it comes all preloaded in a syringe. They get a tag with it that says "Home Again" on it. Also has. With the home again phone number, um, the microchip number is on that tag, which that way if just somebody two streets over finds the finds the pet wandering, they can just call immediately call the home again. Mm -hmm. But again, tags aren't always used, so. Is there any information? I'm just wondering if Mary is doing like uh, dog licenses or something that there's like a pamphlet or something. I have a flyer that I gave to people that came on Saturday, and that gave them their microchip number, and then all the other benefits that it comes that comes with it. It was just their way, that how they can go on to the Home Again uh, website. They can update their information if they move, or they get a new phone number. Um, they can add more, you know, more pets, of course, can be added to your, to your account, you know, by getting more chips. And they do have a, they do have a, a pamphlet that they offered to send. But I told it for what I was doing on Saturday, just to, by then the people have already been convinced to come. And there was no convincing. I put it out there and people were more than happy to come. I had actually even scheduled it for the Saturday before, but weather, blizzard, the weather, the blizzard prediction canceled it out. And the people still came the next week, so. And I've had people since then say, let me know when your next one's gonna be. My brother wants to have his done, and you know, that type of thing, so. I mean, you're talking about Minimal costs for $11 is, is great. I mean, if you have somebody donating your time to do this, I mean, that's just phenomenal. I mean, all you do is take this and wave it over the animal, and then yeah. it tells you everything. You know, that's I mean, if, if, as an example, if a pet, if I pick up a pet on Saturday afternoon and Mary's already closed, I then have to take the dog to Pine Plains. Well, by the time Mary's open again, that's like $120 later for the owner of the dog if there's no town tag and no microchip. And of course, a microchip does not take the place of a town tag legally, and they should still have that because even if the dog gets taken, if, if the dog goes from here into Livingston or into Germantown, and then it goes to Pine, because both those place, towns take theirs to Pine Plains, they, Pine Plains, any shelter cannot release the dog until they have a town tag. So that means they'd be waiting until Thursday night, and even if they're standing there in the doorstep when they open at 7 in the morning at Pine Plains, they get charged for, for Friday also. And that's $18 a day. 
So for less than one day of, of you know, of boarding in a shelter, they're able to get their pets back. And to say nothing of the worry. One time, one one time fee. lifetime fee. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, you don't have more people interested in this. Is my dog gone? Your dog is Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, did we uh, sign a voucher for that to pay for it? I think yes, we did. Yes, I've already it? gotten it. Okay. And that one we got for 200 because it was through my rescue group. Um, but for other towns, which I'm doing a letter for Ray to take to the to the supervisors meeting, the if there's an order of five micro uh, five scanners, the chart the cost is 250 per scanner. And you can do it for three, and then it's 275, and one is 300. <clears throat> but ideally, all the towns would have one. Because they're, they're not, few if any of the dog wardens are paid mileage. So eventually, it's going to become an issue that somebody's going to, have, going to ask for a raise. And by the dog warden having the chip, the scanner, they can scan for the chips, save themselves the time and distance to go to to whatever they're whoever they're using for a shelter. To say nothing of the service <coughs> for the citizens, for the taxpayers. Okay. Well, okay. That's excellent. Glad you brought that in. Glad you could, if you give me that letter, I'll certainly uh, forward it on to the uh, chairman. He'll distribute to all the supervisors and all the uh, Yeah, I'm hoping I'm gonna I'm gonna contact other vets in other parts of the, of the county so that people don't have to travel all the way to Germantown. And you know, hopefully, other vets will be on board to just to do a complimentary because the, the you know the objection is nothing. You know, like I said, I do all the paper what paperwork there is and so forth. So mm -hmm. just asking for half hour, forty five minutes of their time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, Desiree, well. if you could get me some information, like Chris asked. Um, I could hand it out to people. Okay. Type up something. I can do that. And let me know when you're going to have the clinics. Maybe I could put it on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say maybe it would be possible under the uh, under Desiree where she's listed in the on the town website. Maybe add that website to it as well. All right, we can do that. I'm sure Home Again would be happy to have the information. I can hand At something out. It, it, and this is the you know, and there's other happened. there are other microchips by you know, there's Avid and other companies that make the chips. This is a universal scanner, so when I scan it, if it's an Avid, I scan your sister's and it, she didn't know it was microchip. Came up as an Avid chip and then with the number, the chip number, and then they would just call Avid companies to get the find out who the owner is. Find out who the owner is. Because there's alternate information too. If you're on a cruise and your dog is found, your alternate info, you know, alternate contact person is listed with the company as well. So it's amazing. Technology's going one way. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Thank you for being on it. Any other point, comment? I do. You do. I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, I'll see Bill's <laughs> I would just like to thank Desiree. <laughs> openly <laughs> because she came to the aid of our family there was a, a house fire and dogs involved that everybody got out fine all the dogs and the cat and Desiree has had started with three dogs now she's got just two of the dogs and she has had them since Friday morning at three she came out three in the morning in the snow down her driveway which is wasn't plowed <laughs> and got back up. I just really want to thank her publicly for that. And she's, you know, she's terrific. I mean, who, how many other dog wardens are going to do that? Take your dogs into her house and keep them for you until people get settled, you know, in a new situation. So I really want to thank her. Absolutely. And I would like to thank the Claremont Fire Department. They too deserve a big thank you because they were there very quickly, got that fire out, and really, you know, saved the house. I mean, totally saved the house. It's not, it's not minor damage, but it's not, it could have been a lot worse, and everybody did get out of right, so that's the important thing. Mary, while you're talking about the fire department, I might just mention on the 
tape that they are looking to establish a junior fire that's right. Department, you know, me junior members. Junior members, age any, 14 to 16. Yeah, and anybody that might be interested. I know they've got, I think, three or maybe more by now that, that are interested. And uh, if any, the, any young guys are out there with parental right. permission from 14 to 16, they can become junior members. And not only junior members, but anyone over the age, from 18 on up, because um, they could use the volunteers, and it is very important. Sure. Um, you know, it's not easy to get up and come out in the middle of the night in the snow and that, but we have to have someone, some people to do it because you can save a life or save a house, you know. So That's join. Very, yeah, very if you want to join, contact uh, <coughs> Chief Fred Gooderham. Get in touch with me. I'll put you in touch with him if anybody's interested. Good. Thank good. you. All right. Good. Thank you. Um, so I have. Let's see. Both have any other comments? Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. What's that, Evan or Chris? Chris. Me.